grade sevens, I'm Helen and this is your natural sciences lesson. And remember in our last lesson, we introduced you to this very strange concept of energy. And what our focus is today is to look at non-renewable energy sources. So let's very quickly recap. We know that all living things as well as machines and appliances all need energy to either carry out basic life processes like growth and reproduction and movement or to move if they are appliances and machines. And all of this we call work. And we can't do work, we can't move, we can't bring about action if we don't have energy. And remember that I also told you that energy was quite a difficult concept to get your minds around because you can't see it. What you can see are sources of energy. And also in our last lesson, I told you that there were two main sources, non-renewable energy and renewable energy sources. So let's begin with what you already know. It's always good to start your work with what you already know and we can clear out any problems with what you might already think you know and then we can start building more scientific knowledge. So have a look at these pictures down at the bottom of uh, the slide and we're going to sort them into two groups. We're going to look and see, do we think they are non-renewable, meaning we can't make more of them and once they're used up, they're gone? Or are they renewable energy sources, meaning that there's seemingly an endless supply of that energy source? Let's take what you know and start putting it into these two different categories. So let's start here with wind energy. Wind is a source of energy, meaning that it is going to give energy to something else to allow it to do work. Now, if you think about it, can you use up all of the wind that is around us? Is wind a finite source or is it an endless supply? By asking yourself those questions, you should be able to say that the wind energy is a renewable source because it's always there. What about coal? Is there an endless supply of coal under the ground or when we use up all the coal that we've had, we have, is it finished? Can we artificially make more coal? No, we can't. So that means that we must put our picture of coal into the non-renewable energy source box. What about water? Right? We call it hydropower, water power, or energy from water. Now, the important thing is we can't just take a cup of water and say, hmm, here's energy in our cup of water. That's not how it works. We're going to learn that our energy from water comes from falling water. When water falls, it becomes what we call a renewable energy source because we can carry on using it. We could recycle the water. This icon is meant to indicate to you nuclear fuel, something like uranium, which is a particular kind of matter that you learned about in it. On the periodic table, it's an element, it's a metal. So is uranium a non-renewable or a renewable energy source? Ask yourself the questions. When we use uranium, will it use be used up? Or can we always find more of it? Is there an ongoing supply? Well, uranium falls into the non-renewable. Uranium. Okay, lost my spelling for a moment. Uranium is one source of nuclear energy, 
But once our sources of uranium are used up, that's it. Now we have seen we have a great deal of uranium and uranium is something that we only need in very small quantities to make energy. So we understand that whilst it is a non-renewable energy source, it's not quite as 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 um, difficult as coal in the coal, we can predict that in a number of years we will run out of coal. What about the sun? That should be an easy one. All right, the sun will eventually in billions of years time run out, but for the moment we can say that the sun, or we call it solar energy, is renewable. What about oil? Yeah, the oil that we pump from the ground, that should be considered non-renewable. And like the oil and the coal, natural gas is also non-renewable. We're not going to be able to make more of it when our supplies of natural gas run out. Now, if you didn't get this right and you still had questions about it, that's okay. I'm with you for the next few lessons. By the end of this session of teaching, you're going to be able to be very familiar with non-renewable energy sources. And next time we'll go across to renewable sources. So our superhero asks us, what do we mean when we say that some sources of energy are non-renewable? Now, the first thing we need to understand, we need to be able to use this word limited. There's a limited supply of non-renewable energy sources. And when we talk about limited, we mean that when it's used up, it's gone. All right. So let's imagine you have an ice cream. OK, when you've eaten that ice cream, it's used up, it's gone. You will never have that particular ice cream again. So we would say that your ice cream is non-renewable. All right. It cannot be used again. And the other thing is we can't recycle that energy. So our energy sources that we put into this category of non-renewable, three of them, oil, gas, natural gas, and coal, fall into the group known as fossil fuels. Now, here's why fossil fuels cannot be made and we have a limited supply of them. Fossil fuels took millions of years to form under very, very specific conditions. So millions of years in certain parts of the planet, there were lots of plants growing that when these particular kinds of plants got squashed, under earth and under layers and layers, they got compacted. And their carbon matter seeped out. And that, over millions of years of high pressure, became what we call oil and coal. So we need to understand that this is not something that we can do artificially. We don't have millions of years to make more coal and more oil, for example. So it's non-renewable. Now, where do we see fossil fuels in our everyday lives? Let's talk, first of all, about oil. I think mostly you would associate oil with our fuel for motor vehicles. We think of oil being produced or being dealt with crude oil means the oil that comes out of the ground, the fossil remains of prehistoric animals and plants. And we take that, those crude, that crude oil and through processes of distillation that you've learned about previously with separating mixtures, we can make substances like petrol and diesel. And those fuels then are used mainly to power vehicles and big machines. Crude oil contains much energy. That is why for hundreds of years we've used crude oil as our major source of energy for powering vehicles and other machines. But do you remember we learned about distillation and distilling something and separating off other products. Well, 
other products can be manufactured from crude oil, such as plastic, uh, petroleum jelly that you might put on your lips to keep them nice and smooth and juicy, chewing gum, and certain human-made products like polyester fabrics. What about coal? Where do we see coal in our everyday lives? Well, I think we mostly, if you listen to the news and the problems with our electricity supply, we mostly think of coal being used to generate electricity. And it is our most commonly used source of energy in power stations to generate electricity, which then somehow magically arrives at our house. And that magic, we're going to dispel that magic when we learn about how that energy source of coal finally gets to your house, that when you switch on your light, wow, you have light. We're going to talk about that magic. But coal can also be used in stoves and fires to cook and to keep us warm. What about natural gas? Natural gas is actually a mixture of gases and it's found deep in underground rock formations. Usually if there's natural gas, then we'll find oil or coal as well. Now, the name of one of the gases that is particularly important is methane. It's one of the most abundant gases in this mixture of natural gas. Methane burns easily and it releases much energy. So if your home or uh, school is powered by gas, you will see these big gas bottles that pipes the gas in and you can use it for cooking, for heating, or even for producing energy. Now, we know that fossil fuels play this very important part in the way our world works, the way machines work. However, nuclear fuels, although they are non-renewable, they hold greater promise as a long-lasting source of clean energy. Right, lots of terminology there. We need to take a pause and break down. It's a, although it's non-renewable, we've got a lot of it. Right? And only a tiny bit of the nuclear fuel, like uranium, for example, is needed to produce much, much energy. So we say it's longer lasting and it's cleaner. It doesn't cause the pollution that burning coal, for example, or burning oil produces. We're going to be talking a lot about this idea of the problems that burning fossil fuels cause in the world. And we're going to do that in our next lesson. Now, how do we get nuclear fuel or nuclear energy? Within the atom, there are little particles. Remember we spoke about electrons and protons and neutrons? Well, those little particles are held together by extremely, extremely strong forces. They don't just fall off, those particles. They're held together by these forces. But if you can artificially split those little particles apart, you are going to release the energy that actually held them together originally. And if we can capture this energy, we call it nuclear energy. And nuclear energy can be used to produce electricity. But it has so many other applications in our life as well. There's a whole branch of medicine called nuclear medicine. If you've ever had to have an MRI or a CAT scan, you'll know that nuclear medicine was involved. We use the energy associated with split atoms. We can use it in transport, so we could have nuclear-powered submarines. Have you heard of that term as well? All our space exploration and also in industry as well, we use nuclear fuels. They don't come without their risks, but they are a lot cleaner on the environment and they're a lot cheaper and we only need a tiny little bit of them to produce a lot of energy. All right.
right so we've looked at non-renewable sources today in our next lesson we're going to look at some of the problems associated with non-renewable resources but for today goodbye grade sevens